Washington is considering lifting sanctions on a Chinese police station in exchange for help uh, in fighting the fentanyl crisis. Secretary of State uh, Anthony Blinken reportedly proposing this idea while he was in Beijing last month. In 2020, the Trump administration put sanctions on the Chinese Ministry of Public Security's Institute of Forensic Science for its mass surveillance campaign against the Uyghurs in that country. Joining me right now is former Secretary of State, my, uh, uh, Fox News contributor Mike Pompeo is with us. Uh, Mr. Secretary, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Great to see you this morning. Great to see you too, Maria. Good morning. So I want to get your take on this idea that the administration is considering lifting sanctions on China. Your thoughts? Well, I saw the reporting that said that they intended to uh, propose lifting sanctions in exchange for the Chinese Communist Party reducing fentanyl. Here's what I'm very confident, Maria. It won't work. <laughs> And we should just do things that work. We should do things that make sense, not things that make us feel better or start a set of negotiations, which is likely what the Chinese will agree to. They'll sit down at the table in exchange for having an entity that is conducting horrible, horrible crimes against the Uyghur people inside of China uh, and lifting those sanctions. Well, you know this, Maria. We've been working on this for a long time. We did it for four years. The Chinese Communist Party understands one thing. It understands power, strength, and commitment. And when you say, gosh, if you'll just stop uh, poisoning our kids, if you'll just stop sending chemicals to Mexico that are being processed and then transited into the United States, killing millions of American kids, if, you, if, you'll, just, if, if you'll just think about stopping that, well, gosh, we'll do something good for you. That's, that's not going to work, Maria. Well, I mean, this seems like such a joke to me. I mean, it, it, it's up there on the level of expecting the Chinese to do anything on climate change. So, you know, <laughs> what is going on with this administration sending a cabinet member after cabinet member uh, uh, appearing to beg the CCP for any engagement or communication, despite the fact that they've sent a spy surveillance balloon into the country, uh, took military secrets from our, uh, our military installations, uh, put police stations in America throughout the country, uh, lied and covered up COVID-19, and there's been absolutely no response. And by the way, let's add that they've also hacked into the State Department and the Commerce Department. And yet, Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo is still planning on traveling to Beijing, uh, despite China hacking her email. Chinese hackers are accusing, uh, accused of also uh, accessing the emails of the U.S. ambassador to China and the assistant secretary of state for East Asia. <laughs> All of this as Anthony Blinken was traveling there. I'm chuckling because that is a very long list. That is all very accurate, and it's the tip of the iceberg. You shouldn't forget having stolen millions of jobs from the American people over the past decades, taking our intellectual property and all the hard work that the American people have done to create things and to create prosperity and wealth here. The, the Biden administration's model with respect to China began on the right foot. They had the right tone, but their actions have just under-delivered in every dimension. They. They, they have a, a, a version of foreign policy that looks much like the Obama administration's did, Maria. They, uh, they're appeasing the Iranians, negotiating with them. They talked about a, a minor incursion in Afghanistan being just, you know, just okay, that's just whippy, maybe that's all right. Uh, and with respect to the Chinese Communist Party, they refuse to stand up to them. They, they think, gosh, if you send Secretary Kerry, Special Envoy Kerry, to China to ask them, beg them to shut down a coal-fired power plant, they'll begin to behave. That's simply not the case. And that's bad for all of us. It's bad for the people of Taiwan and Singapore and Australia. And it's really bad for the American people when you don't understand the basic model of deterrence that can prevent a conflict with China, which is something all of us have to make sure we're just incredibly focused on. Would, would, you, would you be prepared, if back in the seat today, would you be prepared to attack the economic relationship with China? I mean, look, uh, Mike, the, the capital markets are wide open for the CCP. You know that. And, you know, now we're looking at these venture capital firms that, like, like a Sequoia, that has enabled, you know, so much money from America to fund the expansion of the CCP with uh, venture capital uh, managers encouraging American investors to put their money in Chinese companies that are tied to the military, some of which are already sanctioned. So what about the lever to pull in terms of the economic relationship with the CCP? Is that a step too far or is that appropriate? No, Maria, we had begun to do that in the Trump administration. And I'll concede there was still a lot of work to do, but we had begun down that path. 
It starts with the fundamental recognition of what you just laid out. The Chinese Communist Party has been at war with the United States economically for at least 25 years, probably closer to 40. And we need to demand basic reciprocity. If they can buy real estate inside the United States, then we ought to be able to buy land in China. If, if they're going to they're going to conduct espionage uh, from their consulate in Houston, Texas, we should we should kick them out like the Trump administration did. Those tools, those those economic levers that we have to make sure we protect our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, and that we are not having American money underwriting the Chinese national security state. It's absolutely imperative that we yep. get this right. We have the ability to do this, Maria. Sometimes we think we can't. We have the ability to do it. We should stay focused. And I hope the Biden administration will turn around these policies of appeasement and actually deliver good outcomes for the American people. Well, it's unlikely. They won't even call the CCP an adversary. Uh, the president keeps calling China a competitor, not an adversary. He's refusing to comment even on the cyber threat as they hack the Commerce and State Departments. Here's the president this week. Watch this. Can you tell us about the hacking of cabinet officials by China and the threshold of concern you have about that, sir? Ready? Yes. How we get these guys okay. now? So he just walked away and blew off the question, Mr. Secretary. And then, of course, we have to ask the question, is it because he's compromised? Is it because he's taking in all this money from Chinese officials? I spoke with his uh, rival, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., this weekend, and even he uh, said to me, look, I've been unwilling to go here, but it's time for an investigation. Here is Kennedy on Sunday Morning Futures Sunday. Watch. I have avoided criticizing the president because I, I, you know, I'm trying to bring people together and end some of the um, the vitriol, the poison that's made uh, politics so so poisonous. Well, corruption so is personal. corruption. We don't want corruption in government. But these revelations about the, you know, that where you have Burisma, um, which is a you know, this notoriously corrupt company that paid out apparently $10 million to, uh, to, the, uh, to Hunter and his dad. If that's true, then it is really troubling. Um, so I, I think that that needs to be, uh, that it needs to be investigated. So what about that, Secretary? Nobody knows more about the CCP than you. I mean, you studied it as a uh, congressman from Kansas. Then you were the head of the CIA. And then you were the Secretary of State, all the while zeroing in on our number one adversary, China. Is it because he's compromised? Is that why we have this soft approach? What do you think? Maria, I don't know precisely. I think what Mr. Kennedy said is true. We need to investigate all of all of the monies that flew uh, flowed into the Biden family. There's no known reason. There's no explanation. There's no actual value that was created in exchange for that that we've identified. We should figure that out. Murray, when I when I think about their China policy, however, I, I'm a little less worried about the why than the what. I'm so worried because in every sense, they, they are indeed bowing down to the Chinese Communist Party. They are letting them run all over us. They've undone much of the good work that had been done in the Trump administration. And this presents real risk to the American people, to American commerce. To, to our way of life, and we, we can fix it. It's not beyond us. The Chinese Communist Party has lots of problems. They've got demographic problems. They've got economic problems. We should demand that they behave in the world in the way that we ask every other country to, and instead of giving them special favors in the very way the Biden administration has for these first, what, now two and a half years of the, of the administration. It's, it's unacceptable. The Chinese Communist Party can see us, and, and Maria, we know this. We've seen this in Ukraine. When you appease, when you when you allow others to think that you're not prepared to defend the things that matter to you, they'll begin to walk all over you. And it presents the real risk of conflict with the Chinese Communist Party, which I think they are preparing for and we cannot let happen. Really unfortunate uh, developments here. Mike Pompeo, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much for your insights on this. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.